Well, good morning, and welcome once again to the Morning Meditation with God radio ministry brought to you by the generous and uh, loving members and friends of the Midwest Church of Christ. The Midwest Church of Christ is located at 2115 Garland Avenue here in Louisville, Kentucky. And we like to extend to you and to your entire family a warm and loving invitation to come and be with us in any and all of the services of the Midwest Church of Christ, again located at 2115 Garland Avenue here in Louisville, Kentucky. Our order of services include each Sunday morning at 8.30 a.m. is our first worship of the day. Then at 9.30, we have our Sunday Bible School, and at 10.30, we have our second worship of the day. On Wednesdays, we have our midweek Bible study, prayer and devotional services. Our first session is at 10 at uh, uh, 10 30 a.m. and our evening session is at 6 50. <clears throat> That's 10 minutes before 7. If you would like to study the Bible um, in the comforts of your own home, we have uh, two ways uh, that you can do that. One is the Bible Correspondence Course that you can take by mail. The second is the personal home study where someone will come and sit down, study the Word of God right in the comforts of your own home. Either way, you give us a call, 774-3986, and uh, we'll, um, we'll register you today. In other announcements, I want to um, remind uh, Midwest that uh, coming up this uh, Sunday is the Young Adults uh, uh, um, uh, Social, and uh, Brother John uh, Pooh Malone and... Uh, 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 Sister Lydia uh, will host, uh, uh, will be having, facilitating this, this um, uh, young adult social. Uh, where, are, where are things in the life of uh, our young, young adults? Uh, getting recommitted and committed to, to the uh, uh, Bible and to the Word of God. Where the, where the Bible and the Word of God is a part of your daily life uh, and making a difference in uh, uh, the life of those around you. God wants to use you uh, to do magnificent things, and it's going to require you to get in that relationship with Him. They hope to talk about those things. What are the challenges that are facing our young adults today? Well, it's time that we look at those things. And, um, and they certainly are going to have this roundtable discussion. It'll be at a start following the, <clears throat> second, uh, the second service on Sunday. And uh, we hope, trust, and pray that uh, you're going to uh, uh, be a part of that. The ladies' Bible class will also meet on the 26th at 10.30 a.m. The 47th National Jail and Prison Workshop planning meeting is scheduled for this, uh, this coming Monday, the 27th at 6 p.m. Make sure you get that on your calendar. Praise God. Coming up um, in February, the Minister Appreciation and... <laughs> And Song Fest. Excuse me. <clears throat> um, on February the 2nd, uh, will be the Minister's Appreciation. And that Saturday, the 1st, 
will be uh, the the Midwest course will host a um, a song uh, fest um, uh, Saturday, February the first, starting at <clears throat> at uh, five p.m. The the stewardship packets. Make sure you get your stewardship packet if you have not already received that. Make sure you get that and and uh, get that turned back in as soon as possible. Also, the Village Learning Center is open Monday through Thursday, our after-school ministry. We are taking applications for the winter session. Get your children in to the winter session as they are preparing uh, to get ready, get the young people ready for their testing uh, that will take place in the spring. So you make sure you get them uh, registered uh, for the um, uh, winter uh, session of the Village Learning and Development Center. Also, the Kids Cafe is, <clears throat> is open on Thursdays at 5 p.m. Uh, the cafe provides a healthy meal along with physical and educational activities. Um, prayer is given with them. Uh, it's a great opportunity for um, uh, some young men and young women who are interested in making an impact on the life of young people today. You make sure you come and volunteer with us. The Food and Clothing Ministry, uh, ministry is uh, uh, held on the second and fourth sun, uh, thir Thursdays, and it will be open this Thursday at 3 p.m. The Southwestern Christian College uh, Spring Tour uh, coming to Louisville uh, on March the uh, Thursday evening, March the 12th. The Southwestern Christian College Committee is working out details for lodging and uh, concert venue. Please consider sponsoring a one-night stay at a, at a local hotel. More details coming soon. The Ladies' Lectureship Retreat, the 35th Ladies' Lectureship Retreat, is this uh, uh, April, and the registration is, uh, <clears throat> uh, is needed to be made by February the 1st. After that, the price goes up to $200. The Newburgh Church of Christ, the host congregation, is asking uh, each lady for a monetary donation for the purchase of the final items for the gift bag. Uh, you may give your donation to Claudia McGill uh, by February the 12th. Praise be unto God. Let's keep those uh, announcements uh, uh, in, your, in your heart and let's do everything we can to support them. Also, we want to uh, remind you that I to keep our sick and shut in in, in uh, prayer. We want to want to remember Sister Beverly Bledsoe, Sister Savannah Johnson, Sister Don Marie Sizemore, Sister uh, Brother Johnny Miles. Uh, and Brother Angelo Pentegrast. Pray also for our shut-ins, Sister Louise Covington, Sister Sarah Cowan, Sister Mary Hunter, <clears throat> Sister Pearl Smith, uh, uh, Sister um, Vivian Wakefield, And uh, um, uh, Sister Mary Wood, keep these in, in prayer um, and ask God to, to be 
with them. Also, uh, we want to remember those going through uh, dialysis and, and radiation. I want to re remember our uh, dear friends. Uh, <clears throat> uh, Sister Angela Walls Gill, Sister Sheila Heiner, Sister Sandy Hammond Schuler, Sister Rita Kamishi, uh, Sister Sarah, the daughter of uh, Brother Clark and Sister Ellen Standard. Also, uh, Sister uh, Beverly Bledsoe, Sister Anya Lawson, and Sister Latanya Johnson. Pray for these sisters. Also for Brothers Jasper Crenshaw, Brother Richard Rose, Brother Gary King, Brother Frederick Hines, and Brother Marvin Stevenson, Jr. Sister Tony uh, Jones uh, is asking for prayer for her nephew, Cameron Livers, who died on Thursday. Uh, and and uh, prays, prayers for me, too, also. So let's keep um, our, all of these uh, that are going through... Um, uh, the bereavement, we want to uh, uh, say again, uh, the, the, the Church of Christ community, <coughs> the Church of Christ community <coughs> is, is mourning the, the death, <coughs> there's mourning the death of uh, uh, Brother Jerry Casey, one of the elders uh, at the um, <clears throat> at the uh, Church of Christ uh, in Jeffersonville, the um, Hamburg Pike, his body, his viewing of his body is going to be uh, today at the Scott Funeral Home, um, and uh, you uh, can go by from ten to twelve to view the body there. And we are asking that you show your love and respect for uh, Brother Casey's family uh, who have served the Lord's people for uh, a good number of years. And uh, we're just thankful to God for, for him. Uh, the life that he lived before men <clears throat> was a great life. And we, we thank God for him. We want to um, ask you to bow with me. Let's, <clears throat> let's go to God in prayer. Our Father which art in heaven, as we bow our heads today, we are mindful that you're God and you're God all alone. What can we draw or paint a picture of you that can look like you? Oh, you're so awesome. And, oh, God, we pray that we, we never defame the holy name, the name that you gave above every name, that at the name of Jesus let us bow before him. At the, at the name of Jesus, help us to confess that he is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Lord, we pray for our children of this generation. We pray for their parents, and we pray for all of these who are listening to the morning meditation with God. We pray, dear God, that you would show your mercy and your kindness towards them. Father, we bring the family of Sister Tony Jones as they mourn the death of her nephew. We pray for them. We pray for the Casey family. We pray for all of those. Lord, we pray for the Miles family in Jeffersonville. Lord, be with them. 
Oh, Lord, give them comfort in the death of their mother. Lord, we call upon you now as we open up your word this day. May you allow us to go into the depths of your word to bring out those things that will help me in every, every ear that hears a word from the Lord. I thank you, O oh God, in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus, I do pray. Amen. Praise be unto God. Now, let's open up your Bibles to the book of Psalms, the first division. The book of Psalms, the first division. The Bible, the word of God says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and it is in his law doth he meditate day and night. Nugget. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the Wind driveth away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Jesus come to show us how to live in this new kingdom of God. Matthew records him teaching his disciples in the mountain. In Matthew chapter 5, beginning at verse number 3, the Bible, the word of God says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. And blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. And blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you, and they shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice. Rejoice, he says. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven for so persecuted they, the prophets, which were before you. Now, let's open up our Bibles to the book of John. The Gospel of John, this chapter is 17. And the verse uh, is uh, 17 and uh, 18. The Bible, the word of God says, 
sanctify them by thy truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. Tuesday, January the 20, 21st, 2020. Our daily devotion entitled Sanctified and Then Sent. Sanctified and Then Sent. God will always sanctify you before he sends you. The Father set aside the twelve disciples and made them holy by the truth. His son, as they related to Jesus, who is the truth, John 14 and 16, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the Father but by me. The disciples were refined by the truth and were to be sent out to preach the gospel. Jesus challenged their ambitions. Uh, in Luke uh, chapter 9, verse, uh, amen, uh, verse uh, 46 uh, he says, then an argument started among, uh, among them about who would be the greatest of them. But Jesus, knowing the thoughts of their hearts, took a little child and had him stand next to him. He told them, whosoever well, uh, uh, welcomes this little child in my name, Amen. Uh, um, whosoever will accept this child and be converted as a child, that's who will be great. Chastised their lack of faith in Matthew 17 and verse 19 and 20. Refuted Satan's influence over them. In Matthew 16 and verse 23. And denounced their pride. In Matthew 26 and verse 33 through 35. When Jesus had finished preparing them. The disciples were sent out. In such power. That their world was never the same again. Satan, Satan, my, my brothers and sisters. Satan will try to convince you. He will try to convince you that your sin, amen, renders you useless to God. That is a lie from the author and father of all lies. As soon as you sin, the deceiver will whisper you, your, you failure. You, you are now of no use to God. This can bring a deep sense of defeat and hopelessness to a Christian. Yet, there is no freedom that compares to a soul set free by God's grace. When God's people allow God's truth 
to reign, amen, in them to God's will and God's standard, then the power of God will be released through them the same way it was released to the first disciples of Jesus. The truth, Jesus said, will set you free. The truth is, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 1 John 1 and verse 9. And, and we are restored to usefulness by the Lord himself. And so is the readings from the books of the Lord. The book of Psalms, the first division. The book of Matthew chapter 5, verse 3 through 12. And here in the book of John chapter 17, verses 17 and 18. Now, let's open up our Bibles <clears throat> to our featured study found in the book, found in the book of uh, Hebrews, the 10th chapter. The Bible is beginning at verse number five. The Bible, the word of God says, Therefore, as he was coming into the world, he said, You did not want sacrifice and offering, but you prepared a body for me. You, you did not delight in whole burnt offerings and sin offerings. Then I said, See, it is written about me in the volume of the scroll. I have come to do your will, O Father our God. After, after he says, says above, you did not want our delight in sacrifices and offerings whole burnt offerings and sin offerings, which are offered according to the law. He then says, See, I have come to do your will. He takes away the first to establish the second. By this, by this will of God, we have been satisfied through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. The perfect sacrifice that the Hebrew writer is speaking to is uh, the Lord Jesus Christ himself. He outlines four significant uh, facts that declares that Jesus is uh, the perfect, uh, amen, sacrifice. First of all, uh, the perfect sacrifice was a body prepared by God himself. That's what he's talking about in verse 5. Therefore, as, we, uh, as he was coming into the world, he says, you did not want to sacrifice an offering, but you prepared a body 
for me. Brothers and sisters, this is a direct quote from the Psalms of the 40th division and verse 6 uh, through 8. He says, uh, he says, you do not delight in sacrifice and offering. Uh, uh, you, uh, you open my ears to listen. You do not ask for a whole burnt offering or a sin offering. Then I said, see, I have come. It is written above, above me in the volume of the scroll. I delight to, to do your will. And my God, your, your instructions lives within me. Yes, the Hebrew writer actually says nine ears, mine ears, has uh, uh, thou digged for me. That is, dug out, uh, amen, of the earth and formed a part of the body. The written, uh, the writer of the Hebrew letter is simply making a paraphrase saying that the digging of the ears is part of the fashioning of the whole body. This was a conversation between Christ and God, the Father, when he was coming into the world. The sacrifice of animals was totally inadequate in taking away the sins of man. Therefore, they, they, they did not please God. As, the, as the, the verse says, God just would and could not accept the animals. What it then could be good God to do? He prepared, he prepared a body for his son. He had to be perfect so that he could be the ideal, the ideal high priest. He had also uh, to be eternal, have that eternalness about him. My brothers and sisters, this should break our hearts and love toward God. Uh, the God of heaven, for it shows the glorious, it shows the glorious love that God extends to mankind. You know, I, I just think when we come to know how good God has been for us, what he did for us, how he came to show us the love of God, how he took, uh, he take our sins and our guilt and condemnation upon him. He came to offer him up himself as the perfect sacrifice. My brothers and sisters, that's what Jesus did. Secondly, the perfect sacrifice was Jesus Christ doing the will of God. God the Father, and doing it perfectly. Jesus did what God wanted him to do, and he did it in, in a perfect manner. There was nothing left undone when Jesus offered himself. This was a, uh, what he says in verse 7. He says, then I said, see, it is written about me in the volume of the scroll. I have come to do your will. Oh God, he come. He come to do the Father's will. He come because we could not as a, as a sinful man stand in the presence of a holy God. He stood before God as the very embodiment 
of righteousness as the ideal uh, of righteousness. Therefore, the ideal righteousness could stand and cover man's sins. I'm glad, I am glad that we've got a Savior like Jesus who has come and, and amen. Brothers and sisters, we ought to shout about this when you recognize how wretched we are. And it took a holy God. The point is this. The only way Jesus Christ could, could please God was by doing his will. That's the truth for you and me likewise. If we're going to please God, we've got to be willing to do the Father's will. This is the reason that man's only acceptance before God can be Jesus because he's the perfect. The scripture says in the book of Romans chapter 5, verse 19 says, For as by one man's disobedience, that's Adam, many were made sinners, but so by the obedience uh, of one shall many be made righteous. That's what God has done for us. He has given us a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. And here's what he says. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. My brothers and sisters, We've got the perfect, we've got the perfect sacrifice and God himself prepared it. The third thing, the perfect sacrifice of Jesus made it necessary for God to take away the old sacrificial system and establish a New Testament, our covenant with man. Let, let's see what he says here again in verse number eight. He says, oh, after he says above, you did not want our delight in sacrifices and offerings, whole burnt offerings and sin offerings, which are offered according to the law. Then th he then says, see, I have come to do your will. He takes away the first to establish the second. By this will, by this will of God, we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ. Listen to this. Once and for all. Yes. God took away the Old Testament law and gave to us a better covenant standing on better promises. <laughs> the only reemphasis what has been done uh, is that the Old Testament, the old sacrifices for sins were inadequate. They were powerless to take away sin. If sin was to be removed, there had to be a perfect sacrifice. God loves man. And loves him dearly. And he loves him through eternity eyes. Therefore, he, was, he sent his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to become the perfect sacrifice. As he says in the book, the Apostle Paul 
uh, says in Ephesians 2 and verse 15 to 16, having abolished the, in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances for to make, uh, make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace uh, that he might reconcile both unto God in one body, by one cross, by the slain, having slain the enmity thereby. My brothers and sisters, God cleaned us up. And the way he cleaned us up is to bring the life of Jesus Christ into us. And he did this one time. He doesn't have to, Jesus doesn't have to die every day, every year. Under the Leviticus uh, priesthood, they, they, the high priest went in, amen, went in once a year into the holy of holy places. I want y'all to know one thing. Jesus, <laughs> He's in the most holy, holy places in heaven and he's there 24-7 eternally. I come to tell you that that is a picture. That is a picture that we all need to, uh, to praise God for. We've got a Savior. And you know what he says? He went in <laughs> to do the will of God and offered his body once and for all. God did everything we needed. There wasn't a need for Jesus to go again. Everything. Everything is what God was having them do. My brothers and sisters, God sent Jesus to be the very sacrifice that we need in order for us to stand before God. In the book of Romans chapter 4, Beginning at verse 3, the Bible says, For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt, but to him that a man that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Even as David also described, describeth the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputed righteousness without works, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. When a person comes to God by, through Jesus Christ, the sacrifice uh, uh, of, of the Lord Jesus, uh, amen, is applied to your life. You could, there's nothing you can do. I could do nothing for the sinfulness of me. But, but when Jesus goes, when I profess to be, uh, uh, that I believe that Jesus is the Christ, I repented of my sins. I confessed him and then I was buried with him in baptism. I, I, I implanted, a man. I implanted my body, my soul in God's hands. And God cleansed my soul 
threw away my sin, and now I'm able to stand in the presence of a holy God. Not me standing, Paul the Apostle. The Apostle Paul shows us what he means by me and you are able to stand in the presence of a holy God. Listen to his testimony in the book of Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. He says, I am crucified with for Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but look at here, it is Christ living in me. And the life that I now live, I live in, by faith in the Son of God who gave himself for me. <laughs> I come to tell you, don't, don't try to go and bring your physical body before God. It takes Jesus, takes Jesus to amen, to cleanse you. And that's why he says, and you are a new creature. If you are in Christ Jesus, you are a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. That's what God wants us to do. He wants us to realize that we have a perfect sacrifice, a body that he prepared for us. And because Jesus bore our sins, he bore our guilts and condemnation, all because Jesus has sanctified and set us apart and made him and made man acceptable to God. I just want you to know we ought to say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise be unto the God of heaven. We're gonna open up the gonna open up the prayer lines now. If if you need prayer, we want you to Give us a call. Let us pray with you. Let us pray for you. That our God may strengthen your life and the life and the life of those around you. Jesus said, Come unto me. All oh, ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me, for I am lonely in heart, and you shall find rest. Unto your souls. For my yoke is easy. And uh, my burden is light. I want to give thanks to those who supported the radio ministry this week. I want to say thank you to Sister Linda Bird, Sister Shirley Coker, Sister Rose Coleman. Brother James Malone, Sister Cynthia Purvis, uh, uh, Sister Angelica Robertson, Brother Jeremiah Smith, uh, uh, Sister Deborah Spears, uh, Brother Joe Stevenson, Sister Joey Stevenson, Brother Kevin Stevenson, Sister Jaquay Thomas, uh, Sister Marilyn Wester, and our dear friends, uh, Brother David and Sister Rita Kamishi. Five seven one twelve forty. Five seven one twelve forty. If you if you would like to have prayer, the prayer line is open. You need only to give us a call. At 571-1240. I just want to remind the young adults, uh, uh, brothers and sisters, if you have 
young adults that um, that needs encouragement. Um, there, Brother John, who uh, Malone and his wife, Sister Lydia, will be having a uh, roundtable uh, social, uh, young adults social, 18 to 39. We want you to come in uh, and be a part of that. Uh, if if we, we may take one year over 39 and one year less than, than 18, but in that range, we want, we'd like for you to be there Sunday and um, get, talk to your, talk to your family members. You know who they are. Get them in the church house this coming Sunday. Let God, let God move in their, in their lives the way he intends for them to do. So let's keep that in mind. Uh, Sister Rita and Brother David, uh, pray that God abundantly pours out his Holy Spirit on me uh, as I speak with my unbelieving family, members, and friends. Amen. And you know, Sister, God, God, Jesus told uh, them one time, told his disciples, don't worry about, don't worry about what to say. Some, they will, some may put you, say all manner of evil against you. He says, but he says, don't worry about what you don't, don't, don't prolong yourself. He says, for the Holy Spirit will, will provide you at that moment the very thing you need to say. Uh, God, God's appliance, and that's why your prayer is so, is so valuable. Your prayer request is so valuable. And that, and I want all of you to realize one thing: before you go into any place, pray that God gives you the the Holy Spirit to guide you, to lead you. That's what He says. Uh, that when He goes away, He's going to send us the Comforter, the Comforter, the Holy Spirit is God, the Comforter. Praise God. Hello, caller. This is Brother Stevenson with the Midwest Church of Christ. Can we can we help you? Hello, caller. All right. Praise God. You can call back. 571-1240. 571-1240. If you would like to have prayer, the prayer line is open. You need to call upon the Lord our God. He is able, he's able to do what no one else can do. So we ask that you shower us, shower us with your goodness, shower us with your mercy, and let the Lord be the Lord. For I know in whom I believe, and I am persuaded that he is able. That's through the phone call, please. Praise God. Hello, caller. This is Brother Stevenson with the Midwest Church of Christ. Can we help you? Yes. Hello there. And how is Brother Fleetwood this morning? I. Amen. 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 And and what and, and what what is her name again? Candy Anderson. Candy Anderson. Okay. God bless you. Praise be unto God. Thank thank you. Thank you. All right. Praise be unto God. Let's bow. Dear God and Father in heaven. We come before you now, and we call upon your great name. O oh Lord, be, be our consolation, be our comfort. O oh Lord, we bring before you 
Sister Kamishi, may you be with her. Give her your words, oh God. And I pray for Candy Anderson and thanks to Brother Fleetwood for being the kind of a person that people will see him in you that they need prayer. And so I, I call upon them. O oh Lord, our God, bless your work today. Give us your strength. In the name of Jesus, amen. My time is up for today. I've enjoyed being with you, and I, I look forward to being back with you again on uh, on tomorrow. Until then, know this. Our God loves you, and so do I.